Is this thing on? Let's go. So this is a blue epoxy river table. And in this week's episode, I am going to show you exactly how we built it. I'm going to show you our step-by-step -step methods and techniques we took in building this beautiful table. And you guys do want to stick around until the end of this video because we got a really cool Black Friday announcement we want to share with you guys. Maybe you're going to benefit from it. Starting off this week's episode, we are placing our slabs on top of a white melamine sheet. Now, the reason for that is the white melamine sheet is basically the final size for our table. But the slab, as you can see, we already pre-cut in half, but it's longer than my white melamine sheet, meaning I have to trim those edges off. And trimming those edges off, I am getting my HK85 Festool track saw out. And what I love about this machine is a very powerful machine and can cut up to 85 mil thick with one go. Obviously, you need to have the correct blade on. This is not a finishing blade. It's got, it hasn't got so much teeth as a finishing blade. So the next step in our project is to build a mold for our epoxy table. Now, a mold is basically like a dam. It's to capture all the epoxy inside so it's not leaking out. Now, the reason why we use white melamine is the melamine on the chipboard, the epoxy doesn't penetrate into the wood. Obviously, you have to apply wax in your mold. Once it's done, that's going to prevent the epoxy from sticking to your mold. Now, the very crucial step, and as you can see, I am installing side panels on this mold. Now, the reason for that is obviously for the epoxy not to leak out, but you need to make sure that the side panels are always slightly higher than your slab. And what I'm doing now is applying silicone on into the edges of my epoxy table. That's going to prevent the epoxy from leaking out. And as I mentioned before, to make sure the epoxy is not going to stick to your mold, you have to use a wax release mold agent. That is a super critical step in this build. So moving to the next part of our project and that is doing the preparation so we can start pouring our epoxy. Now my slab is obviously cut down to its final size already and now I'm just placing my slab into my mold and as you can see it fits like a glove. Now obviously off camera we did clean the whole process with the air gun. Uh, we did place clamps to hold the wood down because once you're going to start pouring your epoxy the wood will obviously move out of place and it's like wood getting into contact with water it's gonna float so you have to clamp your wooden pieces down so the next big tip i want to share with you guys and we basically do this with all our tables it's all dependent on the season we are currently in so now we are currently in summer meaning that once we plan to pour our epoxy we place our pot a and our pot b outside in the sun so the epoxy can warm up a bit that's going to make the epoxy more in a liquid form take it like if say it's winter season and your epoxy is standing in your shop the epoxy is going to be very cold meaning it's not going to be that liquidy now the reason why we do this is to prevent air bubbles if your epoxy is slightly warm and it's more in a liquid form it's going to help release air bubbles as much as possible. Now, starting off with our casting process, we are using a deep casting epoxy that's called Crystal 100. It's a deep casting epoxy. Now, for us, we don't do deep castings 
for multiple reasons. The first reason is it helps us prevent as much air bubbles as possible. So say for instance, the thickness of this table was 70 mil in total. We ended up doing three casting layers of epoxy and it just helps us to reduce bubbles as much as possible. And it's giving us a lot of working time when we start mixing the epoxy, we can leave it in the bucket, the pot A and pot B, for around about half an hour before we even start working with it. You will see most of the air bubbles rise up. It's gonna give you a chance to um, pop all those air bubbles. And when you're gonna start your first casting, you're gonna see it's gonna help reduce air bubbles as much as possible. Now, the specific pigment we are using is called So Strong UV. It is made for UV reasons and all that, but the reason why we like it is, especially when it comes to the blue colors, it's giving you that vibrant blue color that's so popular among the tables we built. Even the black tables, it's basically our most popular range in our shop is our black tables and our blue tables. Now for our South Africans, that's the two colors we are most familiar with. I know overseas like the US and Canada, um, you guys do like more solid color epoxies. Another big tip I want to share with you guys is once you're done pouring your epoxy, we will typically leave our table for around about 20 to 25 minutes. We will come with our gas torch and we will pop most of the air bubbles. Moving to the next part of our project and that's by removing the mold from our table. And for us that's got a small woodworking shop we obviously haven't got a massive CNC machine. Now the reason for this is your table is obviously not level. Even your casting table is gonna be as level as possible, but I don't think it will never be super 100% level. And as you can see, I'm busy loading uh, multiple tables on a trailer. That's because we're going to take it to a local supplier that's got a CNC machine. Now we didn't obviously record the step because I have to leave my tables there and I actually have to come back to the shop to continue with other work. Now the next step in our project is to close all the small imperfections, the cracks and the holes in our epoxy table. Now there's two products we use for this. In some cases, when our wooden slab is extremely dry, then we will come and coat the complete surface of our table with a very thin layer of epoxy. And then after, we will come and close all the small little holes and cracks. And the reason for this is, if you are not going to cover your complete surface with a very thin layer of epoxy, and you're only going to close the cracks and holes, it's going to leave a stain afterwards once you're going to come and sand. That's why we basically, we stain the whole slab if we're going to do this step. And what I love about this step is for some reason, I don't know why, but every single time we apply a very thin layer of epoxy, we will come and sand it afterwards. And then after the oiling process and delivering the table, for some reason, this step pops the grain of the wood so, so much. And I don't know why, but we had this a few instances because sometimes we don't have so many imperfections on our tables like cracks and holes. And we only fill those with a quick set epoxy that's not going to leave a stain. And then the table is also beautiful, but it's not popping the grain as much as if we in the steps that I'm showing you now, we completely cover the surface with a thin layer of epoxy. I don't know why this is, but it is just the way it is. And we're building hundreds of these tables each year and we experience this every single time. So maybe we should just cover it all the time with a thin layer of epoxy. But this step unfortunately does take a little bit of time because we're doing the same step both sides on top and at the bottom of our table. Now, once we apply a thin layer, we have to wait like two days for the epoxy to set fully. And that's a total of, well, five days because 
you're gonna have to wait for both sides to dry. So guys, just a quick one. I did mention a Black Friday special. We currently have a promotion running on our Epoxy Online Masterclass. It's basically where I'm going into detail on how to build a successful epoxy table the first time. It's a three hours course and I can promise you by the end of this course, you'll be able to build a epoxy table successfully. Now the price for this course did go up $150, but for the end of November, we're going to keep it at $89. So you guys do want to go and check it out before that prices are going up. And I am going to leave a short preview at the end of this video so you can see what the course is all about. Moving to the next step in our project and that's by cutting our slab down to its final size. And I always, always mention this in all my videos. Once you start the planning process in your project, always make sure you build your table slightly bigger lengthwise and widthwise because you obviously have to cut your table down to its final size and it's going to leave room for error if you're going to make a mistake somewhere down the line. Also, just a quick reminder that you do have to change blades for this step. You do have to get a blade with a lot of teeth, meaning it's going to give you a very fine cut. You'll see if you're going to use the wrong blade, it's going to look like it's ripping the epoxy out. You're going to have a lot of small little uh, pockets, scratches when it's going to come to the part where you're going to cut the epoxy down to its final size. Moving to the next part in our project and we obviously did skip a few steps. I did sand the table down to 180 grit, the wooden section. And now typically for us, we love giving all our tables a small 45 degrees chamfer right around. We as a epoxy manufacturing company, we like to keep the thickness of the slab, meaning that we don't like a big chamfer on all our tables. We like to see the thickness of our table. So fast forwarding a lot of steps, this is the underside of our table. And as you can see, we are done with the oiling process. For this project, we went with Odis oil. I'll give you some more explanations in this video to follow, but this is just to give you a good idea of how it looks. And this specific table for our client is 2.4 meters long, and it's absolutely beautiful. And while you're at it, you can see I am busy updating my social media pages. You guys are absolutely more than welcome to follow me on my social media pages for more behind the scene footage and a lot of announcements we got going on there. I am going to leave a link down in the description where you can find our social media pages. Flipping the table over, now we're obviously going to start the top side of our table and I obviously skipped a lot of steps. We sanded our wooden section down to 220 grit and our epoxy section down all the way to 1500 grit. And the polish system we use is called the Festool polish system. Now we absolutely love this system. It's got three different colors because it's three different polish grades. You're going to start with the orange polish compound with the, all in, with the orange polish sponge. And then after you finish that step, you're going to move to the blue and then the final one, the white. Now, the polish machine I'm using here is the Shine X, it's 150 millimeter in diameter and I love this machine, it's got variable speeds and we typically polish our tables to around about the speed setting number 4 and number 3, it just depends on what grids we're on and you'll see the colors and the epoxy is just going to pop once you're going to start going higher, well lower in the polish grids for the Festool system. I am also going to leave a link down in the description where you can find this system on the Festool website. Now, another massive, massive tip I want to share with you guys and something we get asked so much all the time is where your polish machine basically goes onto the wooden section of your slab. It's basically polishing that part of your wood. So once you're going to do the oiling process, you're going to see that there's a line where you polished on the wooden section. 
now you'll see in the steps to follow what we like doing is we will come with our finishing sander our Festool ETS 5 with a scorch pad as you can see here I'm showing you guys it's a scorch pad is a 360 grit scorch pad from Festool it's we will typically sand the complete wooden section because there will obviously be polish splatters all around so this will help you to remove all that and then you can see I am getting really 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 intense close to the line where the epoxy and the wooden section meets on our table don't touch the epoxy because it's going to leave a mark we literally are on the line so 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 close and what I love about the oil we are using, the Otis oil, you can sand your table up to higher grits, meaning you can go up to 400, up to 600, up to 800 grit. The oil will definitely penetrate into the wood. But for us, with our experience, we like to sand all our tables to about 220 grit to 320 grit because yeah, we've got our reasons for that. And you'll find that in the masterclass as well. What I also love about the scorch pad is even if you're not building epoxy tables, sometimes when you stop 280 grit and when you look at your wood from a certain angle, you will see the marks and the lines in the direction you sand it with your machine. Now the scorch pad basically soften that edges and it's just going to give you a super smooth surface on all your wooden projects. This is literally a must for us. We literally, there's no project going out that we don't do this step. So for this project, we're going to use Odis oil and there's quite a process we go through in doing this. We will typically start with our Odis oil super duper. It's, a, it's more in a liquid form as your original Odis oil. We will oil our table, wait one hour, we will buff it off, we will come back the next day, we will use the original Odis oil, we will wait one hour, we will buff it off, we will wait another day. So typically for us to oil a project takes us about five days to oil a project in total. And then it's still not ready because once we go and deliver the table, we do a last coat of oil on site in front of the client so they can see how the product works and then we give them a small explanation. So before I'm going to leave you guys with the final product, I do want to mention that for this video and for a few videos to come, our camera did fall. So in some spots I had to use my GoPro and my phone. And as you can see on this table, the colors is not correct. My Apple 13 is bringing out so much orange in the wood. And I just wanted to remind you guys, it's not the color of the project. It's the color digrations or whatever you call it that the phone does automatically. But here's the final product. Before you guys head out, let me know down in the comment section below what do you guys think of this table? What would you have done differently? And we as a small YouTube channel will obviously love to grow our channel. So two things I need from you guys. The first thing is leave me any recommendations on how to make better content. What do you guys want to see? What can we do to better ourselves? And the second one is make sure you like, subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on any future content or videos we're posting. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's video and make sure you stick around because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys our online epoxy masterclass. Cheers. Welcome to this online epoxy masterclass. Moisture content. You heat right into the core wood species to remove the bark with an aggressive steel wire brush. Table design, slab preparation, building process, epoxy mold. Release agent wax. Calculate epoxy. Seven, eight, so we got 16 points. Mixing epoxy. Color consistency. Whether to seal your live edges or not. Pouring epoxy. Sanding between layers, sanding grooves inside your epoxy, dealing with bubbles. Maximum depth, curing time. Removing the table from your mold. A local CNC supplier. 
start sanding. Cutting your table to size and edge. Filling the cracks and holes. Smoky finish, high gloss see-through finish. Wood surface finishing. Tabletop supports. To drill into our wooden section. Our online epoxy masterclass is finally here. It's four hours of masterclass where I'm going into detail on how we build all our epoxy tables. Where I'm going to teach you from start to finish how to build an epoxy table successfully. I'm going to show you all our methods and techniques we take in our everyday business building epoxy tables successfully. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find the details on how to purchase this masterclass. You don't want to miss this one.